What's going on, guys? Back at it again with another episode of Sipping with Sam Rap Piggy for you. I hope you guys enjoyed your National Beer Day as much as I did. And to continue on the celebration, because that's how we do every single day, I'm going to be introducing you guys to Crooked Stave. So, a little bit about Crooked Stave. You know, I like to talk about the breweries before I talk about the beers. So, we are just going to do that. And they have a crazy, crazy story. So, I want to talk to you a little bit about their mission. So, they are a modern artisan brewery with a quality driven focus. And they strive to progressively blend science and art through creativity and following their passion. They are committed to operating as a profitable and sustainable brewery, which spurs innovation through encouraging the sharing of ideas in an open environment, a commitment that is further reflected through their marketing and community involvement. From their humble beginnings, they embrace creativity while always striving to make quality their focus. Today, they are proud to say that they work closely with many of the farmers and skilled craftsmen who produce the ingredients they regularly use. They, period out, they periodically brew with Colorado floor malted barley as their base malt, and they feature Colorado grown hops in various recipes and work meticulously with whole fruit and only whole fruit, most of which is grown right there in Colorado. Their attention to detail and stewardship for the land produces beers of extraordinary quality and is unmistakable in everything they produce. I have had a lot of their beers and you can definitely tell that they take their time and they really drive home the process. So the origins of Crooked Stave. They were founded in Denver, Colorado in late 2010 as an artisan beer project. Crooked Stave is a culmination of brewmaster and Bredemices guru, Chad Jacobson, whose open source master's research, the Bredemices project. Crooked Stave's Progressive approach to brewing blends science and art through creativity and passion. The resulting creations, most of which use Bretomyces yeast and mature in oak, are beers of extraordinary complexity. The name. Crooked Stave is a play on the word stave, one of the many strong wooden slats collectively bound together by metal hoops to shape a wooden barrel. Our name is a commitment to, or I'm sorry, their name, is a commitment to how closely they work with each barrel and it embodies the love that they put into each beer. Wooden barrels are the focal point of their brewery and the beers that they brew. They are crooked stave by way of origins, unique in their beginnings and set apart from their peers. They set their own path, releasing specialty Bretomyces only, wild, sour, and barrel aged beers. So a little bit about Chad Jacobson. Previous to starting in Crooked Stave, he wrote his master's thesis on Bretomyces yeast species and their use in the brewing industry. Wanting to spread the wealth of knowledge, Chad published his research as an open source website aimed at providing a greater understanding of Bretomyces yeast in the brewing industry. Through focusing on strain specific fermentations with identification of the major compounds produced during pure culture anaerobic fermentation and wort, the application of these yeasts in the brewing industry has pro proliferated. So I really do, I will show a link on the Better Mices project and what he did with it because it's amazing the detail that he went into it and it, I think it's really, really cool that his master thesis was on this. So you might be asking, hey, what is Bretomyces? So the Bretomyces yeast were traditionally known for their important role in the production of lambics, sour and wild ales such as Flemish Reds and Oud Bruins and one particular Trappist beer. Over the past decade, various Bretomyces strains have seen increasing use in the craft brewing industry. In the early to mid 2000s, primary fermentation with Bretomyces was infrequent and typically a one-off occurring out of experimentation. Very little information previously existed regarding pure culture fermentative capabilities and the aromatic compounds produced by various strains of Bretomyces. Bretomyces yeast have been the subjects of previous studies conducted over the past century. However, the majority of the research was focused on enhancing the knowledge of the wine industry only. So, I'm pretty sure I remember my studies that Bretomyces actually translates to British fungus. And that is, was often an occurrence because of the fact that when they used to, 
hold their beers in the oak barrels like they always did for for their for the older age beers it would take on that brett character so i'm gonna look that up and but i'm pretty sure that i am correct in that assessment so i what i love on their website too is that they have like an infographic uh picture of how the process works of how they create their beers so i'm gonna link that in the description as well so you guys can check that out and what I also love is the fact that they list their partners that they work in conjunction with to brew other beers. So I'm going to list them out for you real quick, but I will also include that in the link as well. So for their fruits, they use Rancho Durazno, they use White Ranches Hotchkiss, and they use Enfield Farms. For their malts, they use Troubadour Maltings, they use Root Shoot Malting, and they use... Colorado Mountain Company. And for their hops, they use Freestyle Farms, Roy Farms, Peralt Farms, CLS Farms, and High Wire Hops. So I think that's cool that they give love to the people that they use their ingredients to brew their beers. And finally, the star of the show, Nightmare on Bread. I mean, automatically, like that label, if that doesn't catch you, I don't know what will. And when I read Nightmare on Brett, it takes me back to Nightmare on Elm Street, which was one of my favorite horror movies growing up as a kid. Freddy Krueger, I feel, is like one of the best ones out there. So a little bit about Nightmare on Brett. It is a dark sour ale that is aged in Leopold Bros whiskey barrels. And the little description of it states that it is a demonic dark sour. Nightmare on Brett takes on many facets during its transformation to the sour side. Dominated by dark fruit aromas and flavors, the underlying cacao notes meld with an acidic tart berry finish. So, as I said, it's a collaboration with Leopold Bros, and it is 9.666% ABV alcohol. So, I kind of love that they went even as far as that to, you know, do it in their ABV to play along with the beer. So... I want to talk about a little bit about Leopold because when I was looking them up, they are very, very interesting and it's really cool what these two brothers did together. So before they opened the distillery, they were actually a brewery. So they had a small microbrewery also called Leopold Bros and they opened that in 1999 in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The brewery and its adjoining taproom quickly became popular for its array of beers, live music, board games and inviting atmosphere. Above all else, the brewery was well known for its eco-brewing techniques, organic ingredients, and effective management of water and waste byproducts, the first of its kind in the region. It was not long before the brothers acquired a distilling license in addition to a brewing license, which they began making spears to serve the brewery starting in 2001. So right after that, in the mid-2000s, the two brothers, Todd and Scott, relocated Leopold Bros operations from Michigan to their home state of Colorado to focus solely on distilling. They opened a shop in a small rented workspace in an industrial neighborhood in Northeast Denver. Several years later, Todd and Scott purchased four acres of nearby land to build out their ideal distillery, including systems to create a zero waste facility by recycling water, composting, and other methods to further the distillery. In addition to a larger space to accommodate all their fermenters and stills, the site would also be home to Colorado's first distillery, malting floor and kiln, as well as a Dunwich style barrel house, a tasting room, an education center as well. The Leopold Bros Distillery, as it stands today, opened in 2014. So congrats to those guys. And it's really cool that they work together in conjunction with Crooked Stave, who as well loves to support local and you know, that's what these guys are doing together. So I think, well, I'll, you know, I kind of described what the bread already is. So I feel like I can kind of skip that. But the typical American bread beer will range anywhere from 6 to 9% ABV. And that is because these beers typically have a, a horsey, ghosty, goaty, like farmhouse flavor to them. And that is because of the style of how it's brewed and how it's distilled. And one thing to make known that while this one might be sour based on the notes that it gave, 
all Brett beers are not sour. So sour beers can include Brett, but not all Brett beers can, can be sour. It's just one distinction to make known because when you read Brett, I don't want you to automatically think, oh, this is a Brett beer, so it's sour. Don't always think that. All Brett beers aren't gonna be sour. So this one might be, or I, I'm pretty sure this one is, but most, of, a lot of them won't be. So just keep that in mind when you're out ordering beers and you might see a Brett beer on the menu. Don't be afraid if you don't like sours, try it out. You might like, try it out. So that's just what we're gonna do now. So let's pop this bad boy open and uh, let's see what we got. Like that nice little cap there. Always be careful when opening these. It's a little tight little. Oh, what a letdown. How tight it was, I thought, that's what she said. I thought it was gonna be a lot more of an explosion. Guess not. Woo! Woo, 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 look at that. So, this is a dark sour as the beer intended. I mean, look at that, I poured it and it looks like a stout. If, if just, see, and that's the thing you have to remember too, don't judge a beer by its cover color i was like don't don't judge a book by its cover but i was going to lead to that don't judge a book by its cover don't judge a beer by its color because you look at that and automatically you're going to think hey that's a stout right or that's a porter that's a very dark beer but it's not. Woo! oh my god i'm loving the sense it's so complex this is wild literally So as I mentioned before, you get that like horsey, that goatee, that like farmhouse scent. But then that's layer two because you get the whiskey scents on it as well. You get the, the barrel. It kind of smells like a, I feel like an oak barrel. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but. But you definitely get the wood on it. You definitely get the whiskey on it. You definitely get that horsey, that goatee, that like Brett scent, like it's automatic when you smell that. If you smelled bread beers before, you get the bread off of this. That's delicious. That is such a delicious, complex, layered beer. It has a medium body, completely washes over the palate. Oof. So everything that I got on the nose, I got on the tongue as well. I get the, I like that the, that it's like slightly sour. It's not overbearing, but you get that farmhouse. You get like that, that horse blanket, that, that taste as well. That bread taste, you get that. You get the whiskey, you get the barrel. You get a little bit of everything on this and what I like about it too is that nothing is overbearing. Everything plays together well, everything balances each other out. So it makes for a complex layered beer that is extremely delicious to take down. And honestly, I mean, with the whiskey, I, I would guess a higher ABV beer, but I would guess somewhere along the lines of eight to eight and a half. Not maybe even like bordering nine, but nothing like so much so that it's like, oh, that's such a boozy beer. Again, everything plays together so, so well. Delicious, great to drink. And if you're not, I wouldn't say this would be a starter sour because you do get those sour notes, but it's not so overbearing that it puckers the lips and it makes you turn away from a beer if you don't like a sour. So Crooked Stave, Leopold Bros, Big Ups. This is an amazing, delicious, fantastic beer. I'm so glad I picked this, you know, really off the label, but this is an amazing drinking, 
fantastic beer. So not knowing the ABV or just picking it up, I'd probably be, be able to go through a bottle by myself, but then I might want to venture onto something else. This is not a heavy beer. It is easy drinking, uh, medium drinking. It, it's not so easy drinking, but it's not heavy. It's, it's definitely drinkable. And as far as pairings go, man, this is tricky because you get the bread, you get the sour, you get the, the whiskey. Dessert? Definitely I would do this for a dessert, but I don't know, on the lighter sours, I always like to use it like as a vinaigrette for a dressing, but I don't feel like I can do that with this. You know what? I feel like I can use this as a hoisin sauce or like an eel sauce for like salmon. I think this would go fantastic with it. For, I mean, you can even use it as a hoisin sauce for chicken. You can use it, I feel like you can kind of make it into like a teriyaki glaze for, you know, like your sushi. I think that'd be bomb. But for dessert, I'm tasting this and I'm thinking, I'm feeling like a deep, dark, fudge chocolate to kind of counterbalance that richness with the, the sour, the tartness, and the, the whiskey taste, I think that'd be the perfect, perfect match for this. And I mean, I'm talking about all this and I'm like gushing over this beer because it is just that delicious. Extremely well done, Crooked Stave. Fantastic partnership with Leopold Bros. This is an amazing, fantastic beer. If you guys haven't had the chance to try this beer or just try Cook with this Dave in general, I definitely recommend that you do because they are putting out some amazing, amazing stuff. And guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys just, you know, jumping in, learning about these beers, these breweries, and just, you know, listening to me talk about beer. So before I go, you know, I like to give some love. So let's see, we had Brulehan. We have a, we have Calusa Brewing to, to tune in. What's going on, guys? Appreciate the love, hungry yokai, queso over from San Diego, beerly vegan. How you doing? XM3, what's going on, brother? Greg, Tukit, how you doing? Jesse Cheeks, how are you? Brology, how's it going, man? And done making sense and roaming bold. How are you guys doing? Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And guys, before you go, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends. Let them know what we're doing. Let them know what we're drinking. It didn't show you tuned in. It just showed two eyes. Well, of course, my lovely wife always tuning in. Thank you, baby. And yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends. Let them know what we're doing. Let them know what we're drinking. If you have any beers or breweries you'd like to recommend, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to find out, learn, and expand my knowledge on the beer and brewery world. And you can find me on Twitter, Patreon, YouTube, Facebook. I feel like I'm missing one. Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, YouTube, Facebook. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess that's it. Find me somewhere. Let's talk. Let's chat. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any beers you'd like to recommend, please let me know. And yeah, I'm going to go finish this because this is delicious. I hope you guys have a fantastic night. Have a great rest of the week. I hope your Monday has been as fantastic as mine. And yeah, till the next time, my friends. Love you. Appreciate you. Cheers.